Hi there, welcome to another Incipia app marketing session. Today is actually not on this topic of app store optimization, but rather uh, calculating ROI from ad spend. Uh, so it's a general app marketing uh, topic. So specifically, we're calculating return on ad spend as our ROI KPI. And that's just simply how much money are we generating based on how much money we've spent and we're doing it from the perspective of cohort reporting, which is really, if you're calculating return on ad spend or ROI, you're going to want to use cohort as opposed to just general uh, performance. And cohort is when you break out uh, whatever report it is that you're looking at by particular groups. So we're doing uh, date-based cohort analysis where we're looking at each week, how are we doing um, progressively over time. Basically, how much money are we generating each week after we've acquired users? And so it's it's important to do cohort analysis rather than, um, I'll be showing you adjust. It's important to do cohort analysis rather than just deliverables and how much money we are making in any particular week or month if you're doing monthly cohort analysis or day because if you're looking at deliverables and you're looking at, let's say, revenue um, from a particular channel, so let's let's say we're talking about Facebook today. If you're looking at Facebook ads and you've been running Facebook ads for several months or a decent period of time, then in deliverables, in the total performance from that time period you're looking at, you're going to see all revenue captured during that time period. So, for example. Uh, if you're looking at the 2nd through the 8th of January, you're going to see all revenue generated from each of the trackers, from Facebook um, users and that particular date. Even if you acquired the user three months ago, you're still going to see if they generated revenue during this week, that revenue. So cohort analysis helps you uh, only capture return on ad spend or ROI from a particular week or month's cohort, only people that were acquired during that week or that month. So that helps you calculate true return on ad spend um, for that particular cohort rather than being inflated by capturing all revenue generated even if it wasn't earned from that particular week. It probably will make more sense as we dive more into it, but that's a brief description of cohort and what it is. So first off, we're going to start by bringing in the cost. That's the, the bottom end of the equation. So this will be from your ad platform. So this could be Facebook. And we're going to pull in the cost from a particular week. And that's the, the first week in January, $300 we spent in this week. And then for installs, it's good to understand how much we're paying to acquire users. Um, you pull this from the adjust deliverables. So that can be from this tab. That's just saying during this week, how many people installed from that particular channel, Facebook. All right, so you go and you pull in that from just, we got 100 installs this week, 175 the next week, these are all, this is all dummy data. Um, then we calculate the cost per install. Then we're going to want to pull in revenue um, from adjust, and that's when we start to get into the cohort side of things. And now I've got return on ad spend listed first, which is calculated based on the cohort revenue and the cost, because this is our KPI, this is what we care about. We're saying, we spent $300 this week. Uh, how much money did we make back? And again, this is dummy data, just filled in some, some random numbers. Um, so and this is this is pretty poor return ad spend, uh, but again, just dummy data. Uh, so in order to start the actual cohort analysis, we're going to look at, uh, click over to the cohorts tab in adjust. Go. So you click from deliverables to cohorts, and then by default you're going to see last 30 days, and it's probably going to give you retained users and sessions per user. So in order to get to the data we re that we really care about, which is revenue, you need to click over to the side here, this filter icon, and that'll give you the ability to change uh, what data you're looking at. So oh, first off, you're going to want to select the particular uh, 
week or the cohort that you want to see the data from. Again, this is when you set the date range in cohorts, you're saying only people that were acquired or became users of our app during that particular time range, in this case, January 2nd through the 8th. We only want to see data from them. How much revenue did they generate? Not how much revenue was recorded overall, as would be in the deliverables tab. So go and select your date range, and then go to the filter over here, click KPI selection, and you'll be able to select whatever KPI it is that you want. So in this case, we want revenue uh, per day, or rather per week. This is revenue per time period, time unit, rather. So select revenue per day, and then change the cohort period to week. And this is saying, the difference between these two is that this looks at the, the date range that you're looking at, only users who were acquired during this particular date range. And this is your granularity. Uh, so users that were acquired during this time period since then, do you want to see the data broken down by day, by week, by month? So if we select a day, then we would see uh, 0D, 1D, 2D, 3D, uh, all the days afterwards. Or month, it would be 0M. Uh, and it just starts at 0. And this is saying that from days, from day 0 to day uh, 6, this is week 1. Uh, and then week one is actually week two. So this is day seven through um, end of week day 13. So this is the first week. This is the second week. Don't get confused by this. Uh, and this is the third week and moving on. So what we're going to do here is capture the revenue that was recorded for our ad channel, which is Facebook. So you would go down to your tracker, select Facebook, and then you would copy out the revenue from week zero and paste that in here. So week zero, let's, let's just say actually we made $100. And I have formulas here that are just using assumptions and calculating, but you enter it in here and then you go over and select the revenue from week one. and you enter that in, and then week two, you enter that in, and then week three, and so on. Now you can see that we don't have any revenue for week three for this cohort, and that's because it hasn't happened yet. Um, you will have this kind of like stepped uh, look to your data set because you're, using, you're, you're looking at people who were acquired during this time period and time after they were acquired. So for the latest time period, we only have one week's worth of data. Um, and this will continue uh, on like this this pattern. So I'm not going to have a, a full data set. And so then you've got your revenue from that particular week. You've got uh, the revenue that comes in after that. And this will keep going for probably some time. Uh, this is just people, again, that were acquired during this date range. How much revenue did you get from them in the first week, in the second week, in the third week, in the fourth and fifth, and so on? And this will get closer and closer to zero. Maybe this is kind of a steep downtrend, um, but you'll see revenue continues to come in from those users week over week over week, because those are your power users. Most revenue is going to come in the, the first week, but then your power users will continue to use your app and purchase or do whatever KPI it is that you want and you're trying to capture um, all of that. So then you calculate return on ad spend. So return on ad spend is your revenue divided by your cost. So you're going to go in here and say, uh, from week one, or week zero rather, divide that by our total cost. Then we have the same for week one, divide that by your total cost. So now you can see how much revenue we're generating in each progressive week. So we made 1.3% of our cost, our dollars spent back in revenue in the third week here. And then overall, you can see how much revenue, how, what your return on ad spend is um, if you sum up all the revenue from all the, the cohorts and then divide that by the cost. So here we're saying that about a month later, we've made back 42% of our revenue, or of our cost, $300 in revenue. 
So naturally you want to see this moving towards 100% and then uh, past 100%. And that's when you know uh, that particular week you had a really good week. When this goes over 100%, you know that whatever you did in that week to acquire users, what targeting you used, what bids you used, what uh, ads you used really worked because you're making your money back from that week. Um, and return on ad spend will look better the further back you go and worse uh, the more recent. And that's because you spent money in the most recent week, but you've only had one week of revenue to calculate into your return on ad spend. So if you go two weeks back, then you have two weeks worth of revenue and three weeks and so on. So don't be alarmed if you see that return on ad spend for your most recent time period, most recent cohort looks really bad. That's because those power users haven't had a chance to generate revenue over time, over the, the long tail of, um, of time for your app. So your CPI will be instantly, well, this may actually, this may go down as well as people continue uh, to install and you actually would want to uh, calculate uh, the installs that Yeah, the installs that came from that week, but uh, again, the main KPI is uh, uh, return on ad spend here. And so, yeah, that is a, a run through of return on ad spend, and hope that it didn't get too confusing. Uh, but if you have any questions or you want uh, more information on calculating ROAS uh, or some other metric, or you would like a, a copy of this sheet, uh, happy to send this sample template out for you. Just send us email, email at hello at ncb.co. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and social. And check out our blog where we post these and a lot of other learnings and tips and tricks from, from our experiences. So thanks for watching.